Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry video where I'm going to help you to prepare for AQA chemistry paper 2. I've looked at the 2024 paper 1 as well as all the paper 2s that there have ever been and I'm going to help you to prioritise the physical chemistry topics for this year, focusing on what didn't come up on paper 1 and which subtopics come up most often and are worth the most marks. There are six physical chemistry topics that could come up on paper two. Four of them have already come up on paper one, and I'll look at what didn't come up from those topics. And then there are two that are only able to come up on paper two and paper three, and we'll zoom in on the priorities from those topics as well. The amount of substance topic is the most popular topic in all of A-level chemistry, so what could come up on paper two? First of all, I think in the context of organic synthesis, there are two things that are highly likely to come up. They are yield calculations and associated percentage yield calculations. So that's the reacting mass calculations and then possibly a percentage yield calculation and maybe a qualitative question about how well a process was carried out. There's also a percentage atom economy calculation you could be expected to do or a qualitative question about how efficient or wasteful a process might be. And then as a little bit more of a standalone concept, you might be asked to calculate something's empirical formula and then maybe a molecular formula in conjunction with an MR value as well. The most likely bonding subtopics to come up are whether a molecule is polar, so that might be whether it's got a polar bond or whether it's got complete symmetry and so therefore is non-polar in spite of polar bonds, and what the strongest type of intermolecular force might be in an organic molecule and how that force arises. Building on that, we've got the boiling points of different organic molecules, potentially linked to a distillation practical and which molecule might evaporate first or collect in the distillate first. And then again, as a bit more of a standalone question, we could be asked to draw the hydrogen bonding in an organic molecule or between two organic molecules, showing all of those lone pairs and partial charges. There wasn't anything from energetics on paper one, and so that means this could be a big feature of paper two. That means we could have a calorimetry experiment related question, maybe calculating the energy change in a reaction and from there calculating the enthalpy change. Or it could be qualitative, perhaps writing a method for an experiment or looking at somebody else's method and pointing out some errors that have occurred. There haven't been graph questions so far on paper one, so that means that it's more likely one will come up on paper two. Energetics is a topic where that could come in. That is a calorimetry where you extrapolate the graph from two best fit lines and use that graph to work out a value for delta T. There was a little bit of equilibria, so Le Chatelier and equilibrium moles came up a little bit on paper one, but the KC expression could come up with high value on paper two, and then associated calculations to do with calculating something from the KC expression, not necessarily a value for KC, perhaps an equilibrium concentration. Kinetics doesn't come up regularly for high value marks on paper two. The thing that's worth revising really is the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve possibly being presented with a curve and asked to add extra bits to a graph or maybe coming up with your own curve and explaining how that affects the rate of a reaction and linking it to collision theory. The rate equation always comes up with high value and high frequency and the most important subtopics from the rate equation topic are deducing the order and working out rate equations, possibly to do with a table of data or maybe to do with a graph. Again, this could be a graph that you plot and then using that graph to work out something to do with the order for a particular reactant. And then the Arrhenius equation comes up with quite high frequency, so that could be a calculation using the Arrhenius equation itself, or there is a graph that you can plot which has got a negative gradient, and you use that gradient to calculate the activation energy. Okay, that's the end of this video. Good luck, everybody.